Welcome back to the new video series. We are going to be going over high momentum arrow builds from start to finish. Everything that you need to know. We want to thank Archery Headquarters in Rochester, Minnesota for providing us the shop space and an area to record. Enjoy the video series. In this video we're going to be talking all about arrow weight and what's and really interesting about this video is that we're actually kind of debunking a myth. So what's out there right now is that if arrow weight increases you're going to eventually see, yep, you're increasing momentum, you're increasing kinetic energy, but eventually there's a point where it all dips. And it's really important to note that that is not true in normal hunting weights. And by normal hunting weights, I mean some guys like 400 grain arrows, but the people hunting the biggest game out there are using 1250 to 1500 grain arrows. Okay, and those arrows still are not going to see a decrease in kinetic energy and momentum, but we want to bring you along. Uh, on this study that we are doing. Okay, so we have a chronograph, uh, we have various different arrow weights, and what we just got done doing was shooting Garen's PSC Evoke 35. Uh, we shot it through the chronograph six total times. Uh, we did a 397 grain arrow three times, and we did a 497 grain arrow three times. And then we got uh, various different uh, feet per second ratings from the chronograph, and it's really interesting because his bow shot a ton of duplicates and uh, I wanted to bring you guys along on this because I think that this is something that guys kind of question all the time and guys are kind of obsessed with the chronograph and obsessed with speed but they don't necessarily understand what they're sacrificing if this is the only thing that they're focused on. Uh, so as you can see his bow is extremely well tuned at shooting a bunch of duplicates uh, and I want to bring you along on some of the data that we just have uh, to show you that how we calculate the kinetic energy and momentum. And with these two arrow sets, we'll see it increase. And then keep watching because I want to talk you through the in-depth study we did the other day uh, with Garen's Evoke 35. So let's do some calculations and walk you through this process. So the first thing that we're doing is we're actually going to take an average. So by doing an average, we have to add up the feet per second that we got. So do that and we divide by three so this is our average honestly uh, for this we'll just we're not going to do decimals so we're just going to leave it at 300 we'll just use 300 we'll lowball for you so that way you can see you know as, at least as close to perfect as possible for this it's easy 271 so we got a 300 feet per second average and a 271 feet per second average with the corresponding arrow weights of 397 and 497 so now, if I go to an archery calculator, uh, I'm just going to click kinetic energy and momentum. And if I scroll down, now I can enter the arrow weight in grains. So I'll start with the first one, 397. And then our average was 300 feet per second. And it's going to give us a calculation. So now, for that, our kinetic energy was 79.25. So we'll round up, we'll do 79.3. For the momentum, we have 0 0.528, so we'll do 0.53. Okay, so that's with the lighter arrow. And now we'll just change it to the heavier arrow, which was 497. And then the average was 271. Okay, so Garen's bow shot all duplicates there. And then we're going to calculate. And now we see that the kinetic energy goes up to 80.96 so I guess if you rounded that up it's going to be 81.0 and then for the momentum it's going to be 0 0.59 so 0.5 so I guess you could say 0 0.60 so now you just saw that we increased 100 grains from 397 to 497 and we went up in kinetic energy from 79.3 to 81.0 and then from 0.53 to 0 0.60 I, now I realize these numbers to you, you're like, I don't get what that means. All you need to worry about is the fact that there's improvement. There's improvement from the 397 to the 497. This arrow in terms of performance and penetration is going to be an improvement from this arrow, the 397. So now I want to bring you out to the shop area and I want to show you the rig I built and how we went about this in-depth study 
on Garen's compound. So follow me along, we're gonna go over everything. You watched us shoot some lighter arrows through the chronograph and we are using the same bow, it's, it's drawn exactly the same draw length, it's just that now it's in a homemade hooter shooter. So we have our baseline. So we shot those lighter arrows, we showed you the kinetic energy, we showed you the momentum. You saw that just a little bit of a jump in arrow weight gave you a lot more kinetic energy, a lot more momentum. Well now, we took this study a lot further and we started calculating a draw force curve using this ruler, uh, well this yardstick. So we set the yardstick at an AMO standard, so the most inward part of your grip plus an inch and three quarter uh, is gonna give you a perfect AMO draw length. So this bow is at 30 inches and naturally this bow ended here at 30 inches maxed out hitting the draw stops. Uh, we use this scale to calculate at every single inch exactly what the draw weight was and it gave us a draw force curve. So now I'm going to use this whiteboard as a visual representation of what we were able to accomplish. So we took this and we created a draw force curve. This draw force curve is what helped calculate our potential energy. So for those like math and physics nerds like we are, uh, we calculated the area under the curve and the area under the curve is going to calculate the stored energy, which is potential energy. And now when we take certain arrow weights and we shoot it through the chronograph, this is us, this is, I'm a super good artist, and it's us shooting through the chronograph, it's gonna give us kinetic energy. So now, for, again, for people that know a little bit about physics, your potential energy is your potential energy. The kinetic energy is the energy that you've used, and you do have energy left over. So now this is when I talk to guys and they go, well, how come the kinetic energy doesn't meet the potential energy? Well, we have energy that is wasted in our tree all the time. We have vibration, we have noise, okay? Noise is vibration. And by doing this, you start to see that that heavier arrow, it gets the bow more efficient. It's using more of its potential energy to cast that arrow. Now we're not talking trajectory, we're not talking anything other than the bow, okay? We know that momentum goes up, we know that kinetic energy goes up, even as high as that 16 grains per pound like we see in this chart here for this specific bow. At 16 grains per pound, the kinetic energy and the, and the momentum, they're still increasing, okay? We, we kind of debunked a myth here. Everyone thinks that your arrow gets higher and higher in arrow weight and eventually all those numbers dip off. They don't dip off, okay? And we, we've kind of shown that now. So I want you to understand that it's okay to go heavier. It's okay to test a little bit heavier arrows. You're not putting a detriment to your performance. If anything, you're making your setup better. Animals aren't gonna hear your bow go off, okay? It won't be as loud. You'll probably find yourself shooting a little bit better because it's so much smoother on the shot. There's a lot less vibration. There are a lot more benefits to using a heavier arrow than just what's gonna happen at the animal. And that was the purpose of this video, is to do a little bit of myth busting. I appreciate you guys watching. Keep a lookout for the next video where we use a field point test pack to figure out what trajectory we like. Thanks for watching.